Hey everybody, welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. My name is Insert Name here, Game Dev, and today we're going to be making a door that you can open by just pressing E. Now, it's important to note that you can't open this door if you're not specifically looking for the door, and you can't spam open and close the door. And really, that's all for this, so without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So here we have a project inside of Unreal Engine, currently it's just the first person template included with Unreal Engine, but you can use the third person template if you really wanted to. And the first thing we have to do is actually import a door model. Now Unreal Engine actually does have a door model if you import the uh, starter content, but I'll be using my own door model which I will have linked down below, it'll be in a zip. And uh, if you have, if you want to go with my door, uh, if you have the zip, you just want to extract it and get these three assets. We're going to, for this tutorial, only use the door and door frame. The door handle is for a future tutorial. So what you want to do is you want to open up your content browser and then you want to select the door and door frame and drag that into the content browser. Actually, you just want to go to your content folder right click and create a new folder it's going to be called door so that we like have all our door stuff cleanly in a folder you just want to open up that folder and then you want to drag the door and door frame models into that folder it will bring up this fbx import options you just want to press import all and here is our door and door frame now the thing is that if I drag the door and door frame into uh, our scene, you can see it is just models. They do not have any code associated with them, so we're going to have to create blueprints for them. So let's go ahead and right click in our door folder, we're going to create a new blueprint class. It's going to be of type actor and we're going to call this EP underscore door. And we can go ahead and open it up. Then we're going to just drag this BP door up there to dock it. And we want to add our two models. We're going to go ahead and add a static mesh here in the top left under components. Type in static mesh. And this is going to be our door frame. And then we'll go ahead and click off this door frame and add a new static mesh. And this will be called door now make sure that uh when you uh, uh have these these two are separate so sometimes you might have door under door frame you should not have that uh, the door should be separate from the door frame so let's go ahead and add the models for both of these under door you want to click on door go to the right side here under stag mesh and on none you want to click on door then you want to go to the top left again, go to door frame. Then on the right under static mesh, you want to click on none and change it to door frame. And uh, this is our door. So we can compile and save. And of course, there isn't any code to work with this door. Uh, the problem is we need some way to interact with the door before we can actually go ahead and uh, make uh, like um, the door work. So for that, we're going to have to work in our first person character blueprint. So we're going to go ahead, go to our content folder, go to our first person blueprint and BP first person character. And the idea is that we want to add an enhance input action, kind of like there is for jump, move, look and uh, all these inputs. And we want to make one for um, interaction. So to do that, we're going to open up a content browser, but go back to the first person folder, go to input, go to actions and right click in this folder, go to input and go to input action. And this will create a new input action. We're going to call this IA underscore interact. And practically, this will be the binding that we use to interact with uh, our door. Now, um, the thing is that even though we have this input action, it's still not connected to our BP first person character because we need to connect it to the input mapping context. That's the thing that actually decides what inputs are currently viable now. So to do that, we want to go to input folder here and then 
under IMC default for input mapping context, you want to open it up. Here in the top left, you'll see mappings. You just want to press the drop down and then you want to add a new mapping by clicking this plus icon. It's going to be called none, um, but you just want to click on none and change it to IA intact. Then finally, um, here, if it isn't dropped down, you just want to go ahead and drop down the IA intact. And this icon here for the keyboard, you just want to click on that and press E. And E will be your interact key in this case, but you can customize this later on. Now, now that you just want to go ahead and save that. And you want to go back to our BP first person character. I'm also going to close this IMC default because we're not going to need that. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is actually add this uh, interaction IA. So to do that, we want to right click type in IA underscore interact and you'll see there is a enhance action event so you want to use that perfect now um, now here's where we'll actually do our interaction now for that we're going to be using a line trace if you don't know what a line trace is it's practically like kind of like shooting a laser out of your eye and if that laser hits something we uh, can get information about the thing it hit. So we can know what our player is looking at. In the bottom right, I'm just going to auto save like that. Perfect. Now, um, to do that, we're going to drag off the started pin of the eye intact. The started pin is only called once when the player presses the E key. And then finally, we just want to go ahead and add our line trace. And we'll use the line trace by channel. And the starting position of this line trace will be um, the location of our camera. So in the top left corner, you want to grab your first person camera, drag off its pin and type in location. And then you want to get world location. I'm going to connect this to the start location. And then the end location will take a bit of math. The first thing we need to know to get the end location is the rotation of the camera. So we know which way it is looking. So we'll type in rotation once we drag off the uh, first person camera. And then you want to get world rotation. And even though we have the rotation, we still don't necessarily know where it's looking. So we want to get the front side of the camera. To do that, we want to take uh, drag off the return value and type in forward vector. And this will return the forward uh, location of the uh, rotation here. And then finally, we want uh, to uh, set up a value here, which will be like a range of interaction. So how far the player can reach to interact with the door. To do that, you drag off the return value and type in multiply. And this bottom value, we'll right click on this bottom pin here. And under pin conversions, we'll convert it to float double precision. And this value here will be the range that the player can interact. I'm going to set this to a thousand for um, just basic reasons. I think a thousand is a good value. Then I'll right click on this pin here and promote it to a variable. And I'll call this interaction range I'll also go to the right side here under variables and set it to private awesome now to finally get the end location you just want to add both of these values together so drag off the get world location of the first person character and type in add and then you just want to add both of these and just move the line trace by channel out and connect the end and this is practically all the line trace code we need now this out hit we want to drag out of uh, out hit and type in break hit result and then you just want to click this drop down arrow and this hit actor is the actor that we've hit now normally in other tutorials you'd see um people would drag off this hit actor and then they would type cast to now, in this tutorial, I'll not be using cast 2. The reason for not using cast 2 here is because um, the thing is that cast 2 is very limited in what it can reach. So if I do cast 2 door, then I'd have to do cast 2 window 
or cast to radio or cast to other objects if I ever wanted to do more interactable stuff. So in this case I'll be using a blueprint interface. Now if you do not know what a blueprint interface is, it's pretty simple. A blueprint interface is a file inside of Unreal Engine that contains functions. But uh, these functions don't have any code associated with them. You connect these um, blueprint interfaces to a blueprint and that blueprint can add code to these functions. Now what makes this special is that if Unreal Engine knows that a blueprint has a blueprint interface, it knows that it has those functions, which means that you don't have to cast at all. So to set this up, we'll go ahead and um, on our out hit, we'll take our hit actor, drag off of that, and then we'll check uh, implement. You just want to type in implement. And there's going to be this does implement interface. So this will, Unreal Engine will check that this has the interaction interface we're creating. Then um, you also want to hold B on your keyboard and left click to create a branch node. And then this line trace by channel, you just want to connect that to the branch node over here. Perfect. And this does implement interface will be connected to the condition. Now let's go ahead and set up the interfaces before we move on. We're going to go back to our content folder, go to door, right click and create a new blueprint. Uh, well, we're not going to create a new blueprint. Just want to hover onto blueprint and go to blueprint interface. We'll call this BPI for blueprint interface underscore. Um, what would this be? Uh, I call it is interactable. So what it means that is if anything has this BPI here, it is interactable. So you can go ahead and open it up. When we open it up here in the top right, there'll be a new function that we can rename. We'll rename this to interact. So every time this function is called, we will interact with something. You can compile and save here. Go back to our first person character. And under does implement interface, we'll go to interface and call uh, BPI underscore is interactable. So if something is BPI inter is interactable, we can go ahead and drag off the true and interact. Uh, no, don't want to do that. Um, then we have this interact pen and the target is the thing we want to interact with, which is our hit actor. So practically what's happening here is if it has interface intact. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and select all of these, including the IA intact. You can press C on your keyboard and this makes a comment. We'll call this interact code just to make it a bit more neater. And this is all our code finished for our first person character. Let's go ahead and actually finally set up the door. I'm going to compile and save the first person character. I'm going to go to BP door. We're going to go to the event graph. And uh, this is where we'll have our interaction event. Now, uh, to connect the blueprint interface here, so the event pops up, we're going to go to the top here on the class settings. We're going to go to the right side bottom. There's going to be interfaces. We want to go to implemented interfaces and type add. We'll type in blueprint interface or BPI underscore is interactable. And you should see in the bottom left, there's a new interfaces panel with our interact available. You just want to right click on that interact and implement event. So this event will be called once the player interacts with our door. Uh, to test this, let's go ahead and drag off the event interact and type in print string. So hello will be on screen if we can interact with the door. We'll compile and save. We'll go back to our first person map. We'll drag in the BP door and let's go to the door. I'm pressing E anywhere else, but it doesn't work. But if I press E on the door, it says hello. So that means we can actually interact with the door. Perfect. So let's set up the door. We'll be using the timeline to drive the animation of the door opening and closing. So you want to right click on your uh, blueprint. You want to type in timeline. You want to add a timeline. This timeline will be called a uh, door timeline not time leon timeline perfect 
and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and open up the store timeline and here in the top of the timeline there will be this length you can set this length to anything and this will be the length of the animation so in this case let's say i want the length to be a second aka i want the animation to be a second i'll do that but uh, this is still not working fully because we need some value to drive the animation so to do that we want to go to top left on the track click plus and go to add float track and this new track we're going to rename it to door alpha and the reason why it's called door alpha is because it will connect to a lerp later on if you're not sure what a lerp does it will make a lot of sense once we actually get to it right so in the beginning we'll go ahead and right click here at zero zero and we'll add a key to curve float zero we'll set the time to zero and the value to zero then we'll right click here under the end add key to curve float the time will be one and the value will be one perfect now the thing is that um oh, oh, the idea of how this works is that if this value is zero the door is closed if this value is one the door is open and so this timeline will animate between these two values to determine if the door should be open or closed. And uh, yeah, that's it for the timeline. We can go back to our event graph. And now, off this door alpha, we want to connect it to a lerp. So in the open, you want to right click and type in lerp. And under alpha, you want to connect the door alpha to alpha. Now the idea is from the door alpha that is if the door alpha is zero, uh, the lerp will be the value A. If the door alpha is one, it will be B. And if it's anywhere between these two, it will get the precise value between these two based on the value between zero and one. Awesome. So we can drag off the return value and change the rotation of the door. To do that, uh, we'll drag off the update pin here and set relative of rotation there will be a default scene route door and door frame you just want to go ahead and select a uh, door so we only rotate the door not the door frame perfect and now here under new rotation you just want to right click this new rotation and split the struct pin you want to connect the return value from the lerp into the new rotation z the reason for that is if we go to the viewport and we rotate this door, you'll see the door rotates uh, based on the your value. I'm going to reset that. Perfect. And so we should only rotate it on the your. And this lerp value, uh, A should be zero, but I'm going to rotate the door by 90 degrees. So that is how much the door should rotate. So if the door alpha is zero, it will be uh, zero degrees open. If the door alpha, alpha is one, it will be open 90 degrees. Awesome. So to set up this is pretty simple. You just connect the event interact into the play door timeline. We can compile and save. I go to my first person map and I uh, play the game and I press E on this door, it opens. But uh, if I press E repeatedly, it won't close the door. And that's because the animation, if we press play, only plays in one way. We need the animation to play in reverse when the door needs to close. And to do that, it's pretty simple. On the event interact, you just want to drag this away a bit to create some space. You want to drag from the event interact and you want to go ahead and type in the flip flop. And under flow control, you'll find flip flop. Now what flip flop will do is practically once you call it, it will call a one of these two but in a, like after each other so if you call it once it's going to call a if you call it a second time it's going to call b if you call it a third time it's going to call a if you call it a fourth time fourth time it's going to call b and it just flip flops between those two so practically when it is on a it should open but when it is on b it should reverse the animation awesome now if i compile and save and go to the first person map again I hit play, I can open and close this door. Now, you might not like that the door is spammable, so I can just repeatedly spam E and it open and closes the door. 
you might want the door to only open and close once it has fully completed its animation. So to do that's pretty simple, you go to your BB door, and here under events interact you want to, okay wait, you want to hold B on your keyboard and left click in the open to create a branch node. Then you want to connect the event interact into the branch, and then this condition will be um, practically if the animation is playing, then we should not uh, run this flip-flop. So to find out if this uh, animation of the timeline isn't playing, it's pretty simple. In the bottom left under variables, you just want to drag your tour timeline, door timeline, into the scene. You want to get it, and then you want to drag off of that and type in is playing. And practically what this says is that um, it checks if this door timeline is currently playing, aka if it's currently in animation. So you just want to drag the return value into the condition. And what we want to do here that if, is, if we are currently in animation, we should not play the flip-flop. So if is playing is false, then we should actually do the flip-flop. And if we compile and save, what we should see that if I go and uh, play the game, I can't open and close this door if the animation is not fully complete. And also if I look away from the door, I can't open it, which is the benefits of using a line trace. Now finally, there is one simple problem, um, but uh, you might not have this problem. The problem is that my character can't walk through this door. And the reason for that is one of, uh, well, it's one reason, but it has two fixes. So the problem is that this door is too small for our player. Now, the way to fix that would be to resize the door. And if you resize it and then open it up, you can walk through the door. Now, the thing is that this door is like comically large, and I feel like this is the correct scale for a door. Now in that case, I feel like my BP first person character is too big for this door specifically. So you want to go, so this is how I'm going to fix it. You can fix it either way you want, but I'm going to go to my BP first person character. I'm going to go to the viewport so I can look at my capsule. You can see the capsule is quite big, but pretty short. Um, I want to go to the left side here on the components, go to capsule component. And then I want to change the capsule radius here on the right side to something like uh, 35 should be good. And this is now the new capsule. I'm going to compile and save. And then if I want to open the door now, I'll be able to walk through this door. Which is, so there's two ways to fix that, but that's the way I chose. Um, but yeah, that's uh, how the door works. Uh, this is fully complete now. Thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Good night, everybody.